Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the future value of an ordinary annuity. In our first lesson, we looked at the future value of an ordinary annuity and we looked at a very simple question. And if you'd like to check that one out, that would be a good place to begin if you do not know how to do a future value of an ordinary annuity. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at more advanced questions where we have compounding issues, where you will have the interest compounding, which is different from the payment compounding. And what you do in that instance, I'm going to show you how to use the formulas to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity in those cases. So if you've checked out the first one, this one will be helpful in understanding it greatly. And that is why I wrote down here compounding. So let's remind ourselves, what is the future value of an ordinary annuity? Well, this is the calculation of the value in the future of a series of payments, hence the word annuity. And these payments are made at the end of specific periods. At a specific interest rate, you will be able to find out what this series of payments will amount to at a specific future date that's why it's the future value now we've done other lessons on the present value of an ordinary annuity the future value of an annuity due and so many more you'll find the links to all those lessons in the description below and this is what we said in our first lesson on the future value of an ordinary annuity when payments are made at the end of each period the annuity is known as ordinary annuity so you should be able to differentiate between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due. And like I said, you'll check out the lessons on annuity due in the links in the description below. But what do you do when your interest compounding is different from your payment compounding? Well, the payment period must coincide with the interest compounding period. If it does not, convert the interest rate to match the payment period. What do we mean by this? And you'll see it very clearly when we're going through the examples just now. But what we mean is that when you have interest compounding, which is different from the payment compounding, let's say they tell you that payments are made at the end of each year. And then they give you an interest rate and they say the interest rate is compounded monthly. You can see that the interest rate is compounded monthly and the payment is made only annually. So you can see that they do not coincide or they are not the same. So you have to convert that interest rate to make it match what the payment is. And in this case, you'll be moving from the interest rate compounded monthly to an interest rate for annually. So you'll be calculating the effective interest rate. But it will make sense as we go through the examples just now. So what is the formula for the future value of an ordinary annuity? Well, here it is. And we're going to quickly go through it because we went through it in detail in our first lesson on the future value of an ordinary annuity. The future value of an ordinary annuity, and that's why I put N there, is the PMT. And then you open the big brackets, you have 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1, and then you divide it by i. And what do these elements or this letter stand for? Well, FVN obviously is the future value of an annuity at the end of a specific period. PMT is the annuity payment that will be made at the end of each specific period. And i is the interest rate. And then the n is the number of compounding periods. N is the number of compounding periods. Now, remember, we did this in the other lesson, so I'm not going to go into detail with this. But what we said is that if there is more than one compounding per year, meaning more than compounded annually, it could be compounded semi-annually, compounded quarterly, compounded monthly, or even compounded daily. If there is more than one compounding per year, you divide the interest rate by the number of compoundings per year to get I, and you multiply the number of years by the number of compoundings per year to get N. And that is what we said in the other lesson. So I hope you have already looked at that one or you already know the basics of it. So let's get into examples and see how we apply all this theory I've been talking about. Here's the first example. We are asked, how much will you have at the end of two years if you invest 1,000 Rand at the end of each month with an interest rate of 10% per annum compounded monthly? We want to know how much you will have at the end of two years. If you're going to be putting into a bank account 1,000 Rand, at the end of each month for the next two years with an interest rate of 10% per annum compounded monthly. What do we notice here? The first thing that you always check for is the payment period is the same as my interest compounding. We have a payment period which you'll be paying at the end of each month. So you'll be paying it monthly. And what are we told about the interest rate? Well, we are told it's at 10% per annum and it's compounded monthly as well. So you can see that the payment period does coincide with my interest rate compounding. So we do not have to convert the interest to match the payment period. And that is what we meant in that note. But you'll see 
the examples which are to follow just now where they will not be the same and we'll have to convert the interest rate and that is where nominal interest rate and effective interest rate comes into play and we've done lessons on those before as well you'll find the links to those ones as well in the description below so let's quickly do this one here let's check out the formula again here's the formula that we are using what is the pmt here what is the payment well the payment is the one that will be made at the end of each specific period and we are told that you are investing 1000 rand at the end of each month so the pmt there is going to be the 1000 rand so that was simple enough and then you open your big brackets you have one plus i what is our i there well remember like we mentioned in our other lessons we like to put our i in decimal form so for the 10 percent which is the i we like to put as 0 0.10 for you to get the decimal form of the percentage you have to just take the percentage which in this case is 10 divided by 100 and it's going to give you 0 0.1 and you should have your i but you're not done just yet you're going to take one plus 0 0.1 but you divide that 0 0.1 by the number of compoundings per period remember it's compounded monthly that means it's compounded 12 times in a year that means we're going to take the 0 0.1 and divide it by 12. And that's what we said in that note where I said that if it's compounded more than once per year, you have to take the interest rate and divide it by the number of compoundings per year. So we're taking the 10% divided by 12. So we're going to go take 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12. And then you raise that to the power n. What is n there? Well, n is the number of compounding periods, not just the number of years. So here we have two years, but we have to multiply it by the number of compoundings per year. And that's what we also mentioned in that note. So we're going to take two years times 12 because it's compounded monthly. That means it's compounded 12 times per year. So you take the number of years times the number of compoundings per year. That's going to be the N on top here that you raise it by. And then you minus one and then you divide it by the I. What is our I again? It's 0 0.10, which is a 10% divided by 12. Don't forget to divide that by 12. Students always make that error of not deducting it. And now how does it look in our formula? Well, here it is. The future value of an ordinary annuity is the 1000 ren, as we mentioned. And then you open your big brackets, you have 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12. And you can see that's how we get our percentage rate when it's compounded more than once per year. If it was just compounded once per year, as in the previous example I alluded to, you will see that you'll just put your interest rate as it is as 0 0.10 and leave it at that if it's compounded annually. So we do that and then we raise it to the power of the number of years times the number of compoundings per year, like I mentioned, minus 1 divided by 0 0.10 divided by 12. And you should have your answer after you calculate everything. It should give you 26,446 rand and 92 cents. 26,446 rand and 92 cents. Now, if you want to plug it into your calculator, here's how you do it. You first calculate whatever is in these small brackets, 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 12. Once you get it, you raise it to the power of the N, which is the 2 times 12. Once you get that answer, you minus 1. Once you get that answer, you divide it by 0 0.10 divided by 12. And then once you get that answer, you finally multiply it by the PMT or the payment, which is the 1,000 Rand. And it should give you 26,446 Rand and 92 cents. Now, here's a tip for you to know that you are likely correct in what you do when you're dealing with this kind of calculations, the future value of an ordinary annuity, especially. What you need to do is that you realize that you're paying 1,000 Rand at the end of each month for the next two years. So here's a tip I always give to students, which, are, which is very helpful. You take the payment, which is the 1,000 Rand, multiply it by the number of years, which is two, and then multiply it by the number of compoundings per year, which is 12. So if I take 1,000 Rand times two, and then times 12, how much will it give me? It will give me 24,000 Rand. Now, one thing you should note is once you have that answer, you must realize that the answer you get for the future value of an ordinary annuity should be greater than 24,000. I hope it has made sense. When you're dealing with the future value of an ordinary annuity, you take the payment times the number of years times the number of compoundings per year, and it should give you that answer. You should know that your answer should be greater than that answer. So if you take that, you'll get 24,000, and you can see our answer is greater than 20, 24,000. It's 26,446 rand and 92 cents. If you get anything less than 24,000, then you know that you've made a mistake somewhere. There is a tip I can give you if you'd like to take it into account whenever you're doing a calculation to just double check your answer. So let's get into the second example. We are asked here, how much will you have at the end of five years if you invest 2,000 rand at the end of each year with an interest rate of 9% per annum compounded semi-annually? So what do we notice about this one here? 
Well, the payment occurs at the end of each year, meaning once per year, that is the payment period, but the interest rate compounding period is semi-annually, meaning twice per year. So they do not coincide. So what do we need to do? We need to make the interest rate coincide with the payment period. That means we need to get the interest rate per annum. That is the effective interest rate. And that is where you're dealing with the effective interest rate and nominal interest rate. But in this case, we just need to get the effective interest rate because we're going from an interest rate compounded semi-annually to an interest rate compounded annually. So we need to calculate the effective interest rate in order to ensure that it coincides with the payment period. So here we need to use the effective interest rate formula. Where do we get that? Well, here it is. The effective interest rate formula is one plus the rate, and that is the nominal interest rate, which is the 9% we are given, divided by the number of compounding in the period, which is twice, and then we raise that answer in brackets to the power of the number of compounding per year, which is twice again, minus one. So it's going to be one plus the R, which the decimal is 0 0.09, and then we divide that by two, because it's compounded semi-annually, meaning twice per year, and then we raise it to the power of two and then we minus one finally so how will that look here it is we have one plus 0 0.09 divided by two to the power of two and then we minus one and then we get our answer that means the effective interest rate is 9.20 percent the effective interest rate is the interest rate compounded annually just like the payment which occurs once per year meaning annually we have made them coincide that means we can now use the future value of an ordinary annuity formula to get our answer because we want to know how much we will have at the end of five years so I hope it has made sense and I hope you're following that along. If you're given the nominal interest rate, meaning it's compounded more than once per year and your payment period occurs yearly or once per year, then you need to change from the nominal interest rate to the effective interest rate. And this is the formula you use for doing that. And I hope you can also check out our lessons on the effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate to have better understanding where we went through a lot of examples on this one here. So once you have this one, you can now calculate the feature value of an ordinary annuity. So we're going to use the formula that we have used before and that we mentioned at the beginning for the feature value of an ordinary annuity. And then obviously our PMT day is going to be the 2000 Rand, which is paid at the end of each year. And then our one plus the I, what is our I? Our I is the effective interest rate, the 9.20%, not the 9%. Remember the 9% was the nominal interest rate. We want the interest rate compounded annually, which is the effective interest rate. So how do we put 9.2% as a decimal? We'll just take 9.20, divide by 100, and it should give you 0 0.092. And that's what you put as your I over here. And then what is our N? Our N is the number of years. Remember, our N is usually the number of years times the number of compoundings per year. But since it's compounded annually or it's compounded once per year, it's just the five, okay, because it's for five years. So it's compounded once per year, it's just going to be five times one, which is still five. So that's our N, and then we minus one. And then our I down here is the 0 0.092 again. And we should have our answer. What is our answer? Here we have it. Our answer is 12,017 rand. 21 cents now remember the tip i showed at the beginning how you figure out whether your answer is somehow correct you just take the number of years which is five because it occurs once per year just take five times two thousand ren it gives you ten thousand ren and then you know your answer should be greater than ten thousand ren and it is greater than ten thousand ren if it was lower than that like i mentioned earlier you'd have made a mistake somewhere now let's go into our third and last example of doing this one here this is a bit more advanced than the previous two examples we are asked here how much will you have at the end of three years if you invest 500 rand at the end of each month with an interest rate of six percent per annum compounded quarterly now what is happening here well we can see that our payment occurs or our payment period is monthly okay because it occurs at the end of each month and then our interest rate is six percent per annum but it's compounded quarterly so our payment period is monthly our interest rate period is quarterly so you can see that they do not coincide so we need to make our interest rate coincide with our payment period so we need to make sure we get an interest rate that is compounded monthly so we have an interest rate compounded quarterly. Now, that is where the issue of nominal interest rate and effective interest rate comes into play again. Here's what you need to do. You need to convert this 6% into annually first, 
and then once you get your annual interest rate just like we did in the previous example you get your annual interest rate but in this case since our payment is monthly we need to get the annual interest rate and then we work backwards to get our monthly interest rate for us to do this calculation correctly now if you check out the lessons on the nominal interest rate calculation and the effective interest rate calculation especially the nominal interest rate calculation it will show you exactly how we do this and we went into great detail on that one so the first thing that we need to do is to get the effective interest rate because this six percent is compounded quarterly now here's a big tip for you to always remember when changing from nominal to nominal with different compounding first compute the effective interest rate then back to the required nominal interest rate here's what we mean when you're going from nominal to nominal and that is the case with this question here we want to go from six percent compounded quarterly which is nominal to an interest rate that is compounded monthly which is also nominal so we're going from nominal to nominal the first thing that we need to compute is the effective interest rate and then we work backwards to the required nominal interest rate what is the required it's the monthly interest rate or the interest rate compounded monthly so what is our formula for the effective interest rate here we are we have done it before so we're just going to take one plus the r what is the r there is the nominal interest rate compounded quarterly which is the six percent so it's going to be 0 0.06 which is the six percent and then we divide that by the number of compoundings for the interest rate which is quarterly so we're going to take 0 0.06 divide by quarterly which is four times per year and then we raise that to the power of the compounding for the interest rate which is quarterly which is four as well and then we minus one and what answer does it give us it gives us 6.14 percent now i'm not going to go into detail on explaining the difference and why it's that way but one thing that we mentioned when we're looking at the effective interest rate is that it's always higher than your nominal interest rate your effective interest rate will always be higher than your nominal interest rate so the nominal interest rate is six percent compounded quarterly but the effective interest rate is 6.14 percent you can see it's higher now the next step that we need to do remember we said first compute the effective interest rate then back to the required nominal interest rate so we need to work backwards to get the interest rate compounded monthly and remember the answer should be lower than 6.14 percent should be lower than six percent okay because it's compounded monthly and what answer does it give us it gives us 5.97 percent now that we have the interest rate compounded monthly which is the 5.97 percent we can now do our calculation using the future value of an ordinary annuity formula because the payment period and the interest rate compounding period is now the same now let's bring up our formula for the future value of an ordinary annuity our pmt is obviously going to be 500 and then one plus the i which is 0 0.0597 if you take 5.97 divided by 100 it should give you the decimal for the percentage divide by the number of compoundings in the period the 12 and then you raise that to the power n what is the n in this case the n is the three years times the number of compoundings per year which is 12 times per year and then we minus one and then we divide that by the 0 0.0597 divide by the number of compoundings per year which is 12 times per year and what does it look like what is our answer here here you can see it it's 19,000 659 rand and 23 cents 19,659 rand and 23 cents i know it was a long one but if you understand and you watch the other nominal interest rate and the effective interest rate lessons this one should be much simpler for you to calculate and i hope it has made sense even here now remember the test i told you to check if your answer is likely correct you take the 500 rand you multiply by 3 and then you multiply it by 12 and the answer that you have should be lower than your answer for the future value of an ordinary annuity so if you take the 500 rand times 3 times 12 how much does it give you it gives you 18000 rand that means our answer should be somehow correct remember it's not always correct if it's higher because someone can guess any number which is higher but for us to do the sanity check we just check that our answer is greater than that and it gave us 18000 rand if you take the 3 years times 500 times 12 it gives you 18000 rand which is lower than the 19659 rand 23 cents that's how you always check if you want to check if your future value of an ordinary annuity is correct if it was lower than 18,000, then we know we are definitely wrong somewhere. I hope it has made sense. I hope you have gained value from this lesson. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.